welcome to the Challenge to Change podcast. My name is Hazel and this podcast is all about the little changes we can all make that will have a positive effect upon planet Earth. If you're new here, welcome. If you've listened before, welcome back. The Challenge to Change podcast has been brought to you on behalf of ANSA Environmental Services. To find out more about ANSA, please visit ANSA, which is N-S-A, dot co dot uk. Let's get into the podcast episode. So welcome to episode 78 of the Challenge to Change podcast. And I can't quite believe that we have reached 78 episodes already. Time certainly does move swiftly, doesn't it? If you haven't already subscribed to the podcast, it really does help to grow the podcast by doing so. And it also really helps if you're able to share the podcast or share individual episodes. But more importantly, by sharing the podcast and subscribing, it does get those planet friendly messages out there in the wider world. And it also means that you won't miss an episode. So let's talk about episode 78. In this episode, we're taking another look at the unusual items we find at the recycling in Cheshire East. And this is interesting regardless of where you live in the world, but it's especially interesting if you live here in Cheshire East. So, in Cheshire East, you can recycle what we call the big five items through your silver recycling bin. These are cardboard, paper, metal food and drink cans, squashable plastic and glass. Do need to make sure that your recycling is clean and dry before popping it into your silver recycling bin. And lots of keen recyclers here in Cheshire East do exactly that. And of course, we're so grateful to all the residents doing their best to recycle. But unfortunately, mistakes happen. So let's find out what some of the weird and not so wonderful recent items that have been wrongly placed in Cheshire East recycled bins. But before we do, it's worth reminding people that anything that ends up in the recycle bin that doesn't belong in there is classed as contamination. So, let's start with a really strange item that we recently found in recycling, and that was an onion. Now, the humble onion is super useful in the kitchen, but it's really not useful at all inside your silver recycling bin. It is food, so here in Cheshire East, it can go into your garden waste bin if you subscribe to the garden waste service. It can go in your home compost bin if you home compost. Do look online for ways to correctly compost an onion, if you're not already an expert, of course. And if you don't home compost and you don't subscribe to the Garden Waste Collection Service, you can put your unwanted onion in your black bin. The humble onion is pretty flexible, isn't it, to where it can go when it reaches the end of its life. But it's not so flexible that we can just pop it anywhere. It's also worth noting that the onion in question and if you're watching this episode on YouTube, you will be able to see the onion that I'm describing. This onion actually does look edible. It was still inside the plastic netting that it was obviously purchased in, and it looks like it could have easily been used. It was a complete onion. It hadn't gone mouldy, uh, judging by the picture. So, yeah, it could have been used. Um, if you want to find out about food waste reduction recipes, it's worthwhile visiting the Love Food Hate Waste website. You can also get food waste reduction recipes on the BBC website as well. So it's worthwhile looking at those. It's also actually worthwhile following Answer on social media because we often share food waste reduction recipes on our social media channels. 
just head over to social media and search for ANSWER Environmental Services. Before we move away from onions, if you're being really, really planet kind, it's worthwhile buying your onions free from packaging. So rather than buying them inside that plastic netting, if you can buy them packaging free. Now, of course, that's not always an option, but where it is, it's really worthwhile doing it. And when you've purchased your onion, try and make sure that you use it up before it goes off. Um, and when you've used it, pop that skin into your home compost bin. So that would be a kind of perfect approach to dealing with the humble onion. So moving away from that much discussed onion, we find ourselves ourselves leading towards the dark side of the force. And yes, that was a Star Wars reference because we recently found Star Wars themed trading cards neatly tucked inside a plastic collector's album within the recycling at our transfer station. This, of course, cannot go in your silver recycling bin. It is possible to recycle the individual cards if they're made from card only. So if they don't have um, sparkly material on there or they're not coated in plastic, so if they're purely made from cardboard, yes, you could pop the individual cards in your recycle bin. However, it's most likely the case that trading cards of any kind aren't just made from cardboard. They probably do have other materials within them. So unfortunately, they wouldn't belong in your silver recycling bin. The plastic collector's album as well can't go into your recycle bin. So what can you do with a trading cards collector's album? Well, you could donate it to a charity shop, you could probably sell it online. I imagine lots of people would be interested in something of that kind. You could sell it at a car boot sale. You could offer it on a community recycling app. If all of those things are not an option for whatever reason, you could pop it into your black household waste bin here in Cheshire East as an absolute last resort. It's a misdirected testament to the beautiful game. And yes, by the beautiful game, I do mean football. We do find lots of footballs in recycling. And again, if you're watching this episode on YouTube, you'll see a picture of some recent footballs that we found inside the recycling at our transfer station. Now, Finding footballs in recycling does, of course, mean that lots of people are playing football in Cheshire East, which is great. But on the downside, footballs don't belong in your silver recycling bin. Yes, they are made from plastic, but it's not the type of plastic that we can recycle through your silver bin recycling collection service. Moreover, if the football in question is in good condition, wouldn't it be better to donate it to a charity shop, offer it on a community recycling app, or you can also take unwanted sports gear to some sports retailers so they take back old sports gear. So do have a look online for options there. If all else fails, an unwanted football can be placed in your black household waste bin. Another strange item that turns up in recycling are children's toys. And this always makes me feel a little bit sad. I am on YouTube showing you an example of some of the toys that we have recently found in the recycling on our transfer station. But for those listening to the audio version of this podcast, I can confirm that it's everything from cuddly toys to children's bags to stationery to tiny camping chairs, you name it. Children's toys, of course, are made from a wide variety of materials and it doesn't form part of that big five items that we've already described. So what can we do? 
with children's toys? Well, there's lots and lots of options. The first, I guess, obvious one is donating to a charity shop. If we do that, then we can make a difference to somebody else. We can help the charity shop in question. We can enable somebody to purchase a toy for far less than they would spend if buying new. So we can make a difference in other people's lives by donating toys in this way. So that's the first thing we can do. We can also offer toys on a community recycling app. There are many of them to choose from. And I'm going to list a few now, but I'm no doubt there will be more. So Freegal, Freecycle, Olio, Gumtree or groups on Facebook. But it's definitely worthwhile looking to see if there are others. It's also worthwhile looking at local community groups, so that's physical community groups in your area, especially as the festive season approaches, which as we're in mid-October, the festive season is fast approaching. Some community groups will take toys um, for a toy drive for children. So this tends to be toys that are as new or new. So if you have some children's toys that are in basically near new condition, it's worthwhile donating them to a local community group. Of course, check first before you do so. Another option with children's toys, and in fact, actually many different items, is to repair those ones that have broken. You can look on YouTube or perhaps Pinterest for DIY inspiration. You can look to see if there is a repair cafe in your local area. Before we move on from children's toys, it is worth noting that if you have children's toys that absolutely cannot be repaired, you don't have any other options to donate them or give them away, you can put children's toys in your black household waste bin as a last resort. But please don't put children's toys that contain batteries in your bin of any kind, actually. We don't want anything that contains batteries in any bin. For options for items that contain batteries, visit the Recycle Your Electricals website if you live here in the UK. If you live outside the UK, it's worthwhile checking your search engine or maybe asking on an AI app for options to recycle items that contain batteries. So finally, let's find out about our other unusual item that often finds itself amongst the recycling, and that's carpets and rugs. So unwanted carpets cannot be placed in your silver recycling bin. However, they can be repurposed in a garden or a shed. They can be offered on a community recycling app. If you can't do any of those things with your unwanted carpet, then it can be taken to a household waste recycling centre. Before we talk about rugs, I do want to make a personal note here that many, many years ago, I had a DIY eco wedding and we used carpets that we um, obtained through a community recycling app. We needed carpets for the outside area to kind of make the gazebo area look a little bit more attractive. So we got a number of carpets through a community recycling app. We cleaned them, we used them for the wedding, and then we re-offered them um, and gave them away on that same community recycling app after the wedding. So there is a real life example of an unwanted carpet being reused and then passed on and reused again. So it really is worthwhile doing. So rugs then, you can't put rugs in your silver recycling bin. If the rug is in good, clean condition, you can donate it to a charity shop. And of course, you can offer it on a community recycling app. And as with carpets, you can also repurpose in a garden or a shed. If you have a small rug and you can't do any of those things with your unwanted rug, you can pop it in your black household waste bin for a larger rug or a heavier rug, then unfortunately it would need to go to a household waste recycling centre. So there you have it, quite a motley crew of items, but the main theme is clear. 
If you're popping it in your silver recycling bin here in Cheshire East, it must be part of that big five that we described at the beginning of this podcast episode. If it doesn't fall under those categories, then unfortunately it cannot go in your silver recycling bin. But as we've discovered, there are many ways to recycle the things that we no longer want. There's so many different options to make a difference to planet Earth. Before I close this podcast episode, it's worthwhile reminding people that if you live here in Cheshire East, your recycling does need to be loose inside your silver recycling bin. So that means don't place your recycling in a bag and then tie the bag up. And in fact, don't place your recycling in a bag at all. You can tip your recycling in straight from your kitchen recycling bin or you can pop the items in directly to your silver recycling bin outside your home. However, they do need to be clean. They need to be dry. And as noted, it's important that they are not placed inside a bag and that bag is not tied. They do need to be loose. So with that being said, I think we are now coming to a close for this podcast episode. If you've watched this episode on YouTube, I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've enjoyed seeing those unusual items of contamination that we have found in the recycling recently. And if you have listened as usual to the audio version, I hope you have enjoyed listening. So thank you so much for being with me today. And I will, of course, return for another episode really soon. Bye for now.